For millions of Americans, the sight of a policeman instills a sense of calm, faith that order is being kept, that the good guys are watching. But for many others, thousands stopped on the streets of New York because they look or act a certain way. Encounters with the blue and white breed fear, frustration, and anger at a force that some say is bent more on intimidation than serving and protecting. So here's my co-anchor, Bill Weir. Please put your hands up against the wall. It's the kind of scene that could play out on any given day in any city in America. Men in blue stopping young men of color. Why am I being As tensions rise. What's going on? In this case, a robbery suspect is cuffed. Listen to me, you're not free to leave. Just stay here. Turn around. What am I being arrested for? I didn't do anything wrong. The others released, and the cops managed to keep it by the book. I don't get it. I understand you're upset, but I'm sorry for the inconvenience. But this scene is just pretend. It is an NYPD training drill to reinforce a proper way to do what is known as a 250, that controversial tactic designed to stop crime before it happens. Controversial because critics say 250s rarely happen with this much courtesy and this much probable cause. They say the NYPD stops and frisks way too many innocent men of color for no good reason. He was holding me, he was going through your pocket, he was going up, down. You want to go to jail? For, 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 for what? Shut for your what? mouth, kid. For, why am I getting arrested Shut for? Shut your mouth. What am I getting arrested for? For being a yeah. mutt, you know what? Oh, so, uh, that's a law, get, being a mutt? He was going through my sweater. Then that's when, that's when he told me to keep my hands on my head. So I was like this the whole time. Frustrated by how often he was being stopped in his Harlem neighborhood, a 16-year-old son of a cop named Alvin says he hit record on his iPod one night in 2011. Why you, why you press me on that for? as two undercover officers approached. Our jobs look for suspicious behavior. When you keep looking at us like that, looking back. Cause y'all always like, stop. I just got yeah, stopped yeah. like two blocks away. Like, listen to me. When you were walking the block with your hood up and you keep looking back at us like that, you, know, you think you might have something. It is one of the few known recordings of something that happens nearly 2,000 times a day in New York, but whether this is the exception or the rule, is a debate dividing America's biggest city. I don't think it was a unique stop for Alvin or any of the other young people that I've talked to personally. When activist filmmakers Aaron Schneider and Ross Tuttle heard the recording, they spent eight months convincing Alvin to go public for their short documentary, The Hunted and the Hated. And we said, was this you know, the worst encounter you, you've had with NYPD? And he said, actually, no, it's not. He said, I've had worse. Why you, why you push me that for? Why you pushing that for? Why you why you why you why you why you touching that? What happens to officers in a stop like that? There is a civilian complaint process, and indeed there is a civilian complaint review board. Ray Kelly is the man in charge of the NYPD. We have a system to address that. Now, I'm not talking specifically about this case because I don't know about it, but we're human beings here. We make mistakes and we may have people who inappropriately stop individuals, but by and large, I don't believe that is, uh, that's the case. It is event specific. Since taking over in 2002, Kelly has presided over the most dramatic reduction in crime in modern American history. Last year was a record low of shootings, they're down 25% this year. Like his predecessor, Bill Bratton, Kelly believes in proactive policing. And done properly, the 250 is a Supreme Court approved method of stopping crime before it happens. But here is the controversial part. Of the thousands of daily stop and frisks, only 6% lead to an arrest, and little over 1% actually turn up a weapon. Critics say this is proof it doesn't work. Mayor Michael Bloomberg disagrees. That's the reason we need it, to deter people from carrying guns. We are the first preventers. In a fiery speech this week, Bloomberg chastised NYPD critics. They seem to believe that the department should be run according to the standards of political correctness, not public safety. Cops as first preventers only works with the strong backing of City Hall, especially in the face of this statistic. Even though blacks and Hispanics are a minority here, a majority of people stopped, around 84%, are young men of color. How many times have you been stopped and frisked? Seven times. Seven times? Yes, sir. And you're how old? 17. In his neighborhood of Flatbush, Brooklyn, Kasim Walters has witnessed gang shootouts and watched young men his age bleed out in the street. I've seen people shot over there on North Strand Avenue. But after a number of rough 250s. And then they turned me back here. I remember them banging my head into this. He says he's more afraid of the law 
than the thugs. And a few blocks away, he shows me the memorial of a 250 gone bad that fills him with even more dread. Oh, look at that, it's still here. When Kamani Gray adjusted his waistband on this corner in March, two undercover officers stepped up for a stop and frisk and ended up shooting him seven times. They claim Gray pulled this loaded 38 revolver, later recovered at the scene. But Kasim doesn't believe them. That's not killing, that's murder! I'm tired of it! Four days of angry demonstrations proves he's not alone. When things like this happen, there's no trust. The police are never going to get the benefit of the doubt until we have a relationship with the cops. You know, until Ray Kelly can give us answers. New York City Councilman Jamani Williams is a mentor of Kasim's and a leading critic of the NYPD's methods, like police reports, which show that the reason given for most stops is either a high crime neighborhood or a suspect engaged in furtive movement. And I have Tourette's syndrome. Uh, so all I do is make furtive movements. So, you know, I mean, I can be stopped every time I come out of my house. When we wanted to break up crime in, in the Italian neighborhood, well, it was organized crime. I don't believe they stopped every Italian person that they saw. And I don't believe if they did that, they would have gotten away with it. So I think we deserve the same respect in the communities that look like mine. I've been around a long time in this department. Our relations now are better than they've ever been. One of the reasons is our police officers are now minority majority. This is the most diverse city in the world. We are now more reflective of that diversity than ever before. But more minority cops doesn't mean all of them are supporters of stop and frisk. I was stopped by police officers because of my race, uh, because of what I looked like. They stereotyped, they racially profiled. I knew that I didn't want to do that. Pedro Serrano is one of two cops now denouncing his own department's policies. And he says he made a hidden recording of his own. This is about stopping the right people, the right place, the right location. Okay. He is convinced that there is a perverse quota system in place, which drives officers to stop minority kids for no good reason. You don't come up with those numbers. They retaliate by giving you bad evaluations. That's basically what they did to me. After riding just two 250s over an entire year, Serrano called for a meeting with his deputy inspector to appeal a bad evaluation. He also says he wore a wire and recorded this. Again, take my haven where we had the most problems. Right. And most problems we had there was robberies and grand larcenies. And who are those people robbing? The, rob the problem was what? Male blacks, and I told you they're all cool, and I have no problem telling you this. Male blacks, 14 to 20, 21, and I said this at local. Right there um, is when I lost it. You want me to stop everybody, the good people and the bad people, so you can get your numbers. The nine-year veteran is a witness for the Center for Constitutional Rights, an advocacy group now suing the NYPD, not for money, but to change its stop and frisk policies. While Serrano and his attorneys say this is proof of racial profiling, the NYPD insists the inspector was talking about specific suspects in a specific string of crimes and that Serrano was fishing to collect damning evidence for the lawsuit. For context, the inspector also said this. 99% of these people in this community are great hardworking people, but we still have one of the most violent commands in the city. Yes. And to stop two people, you know, to see only two things going on, uh, that's almost like you're purposely not doing your job. This is a business. We have almost a $5 billion budget a year. So we run it like a business, and it's fair to ask the employees here to do their fair share. How does a number of 250s uh, a month, a week, a year affect an officer's career? If an officer continually doesn't do what the commander wants him to do, I don't think it's going to positively affect his career, for sure. But I don't think it negatively uh, affects him. If you don't meet the numbers, you're a bad cop. That's just how they see it. But Pedro Serrano has no doubt he has negatively affected his career by breaking the thin blue yeah. line. Yeah. You got bad guys out there who want to hurt me because I'm wearing the, their uniform. And you got the hierarchy who wants to hurt me because I spoke the truth. But Commissioner say, Kelly insists that race is not a factor. It's just that most of his officers are sent where most crimes are reported, and that up to 75% of violent crime victims describe their attacker as a black male. The percentage of people who stop, it's 53% African American. So, really, African Americans are being understopped in relation to the percentage of people being described as being the perpetrators of violent crime. The stark reality is that crime happens in 
communities of, of color. They are being disproportionately victimized. NYPD, keep your hands off me. I'm just curious what you would say to the kid, the good kid, who's growing up in these rough neighborhoods, who resents the fact that he gets stopped five, six, a dozen times in his young life and forms his opinion of authority around those exchanges. What would you say to that kid? We're trying to save his life and we're trying to save the life of other young people who are disproportionately victimized on the streets of this city and other cities throughout America.